In the last video, we looked at what Gödel's first incompleteness theorem says. In this video, let's try to prove it. Before we get too deep, I want to take a step back and appreciate how we got to this point. First, we learned how to compare infinities using bijections, and saw that many types of infinities that seem different are actually the same size. Then, we differentiated between countable and uncountable infinities using Cantor's diagonalization. Afterward, we applied Cantor's diagonalization to computer science to understand how the halting problem is unsolvable. Now, we'll be using the undecidability of the halting problem to help prove Gödel's theorems. As a reminder, Gödel's first theorem says any sufficiently expressive math system must be incomplete or inconsistent. I hope you'll forgive me, but I'm going to cheat for this video and slightly modify the theorem by changing inconsistent to unsound. As a comparison, consistency means that we cannot prove both a statement and its opposite, whereas soundness means if we can prove something, then it's true. For example, a consistent system says we cannot prove both pigs can and can't fly, but a sound system says if pigs can't fly, we shouldn't be able to prove that they can. If a system is sound, then it's also consistent, so soundness is slightly weaker than consistency, but the proof should be a little easier to work through. We'll come back to consistency in a future video, but because of its simplicity, I want to focus on soundness for this one. Before we dive into the proof, there's a couple of side notes I need to make. First, the amount of valid math proofs is countably infinite. The reason this is important is that it allows us to list out all possible math proofs. Our second important note is that computers can verify whether or not math proofs are correct. We actually already have programs that do this, such as the Mizar system or Metamath. The rules of logic boil down to string manipulation, which computers are really good at doing. So we can write pretty simple and short programs which can verify a math proof. Writing a proof in such a way as to be understood by a computer might be a pain, but it can be done. Now, to prove Gödel's first theorem, we're going to attempt to solve the halting problem. As a quick reminder, we want to create a program which takes in another program m and an input x and can tell if m loops or halts when run on x. We already know from a previous video that this is impossible, but let's try something clever and see how far we can get. This program goes through all possible math proofs and checks if we have a proof that a given program halts on a given input. If we find it, we say that the program run on the input halts. If we find a proof that it loops, then we say it loops. Let's double check that this is a valid program. As stated before, the amount of math proofs is countably infinite, so we're able to iterate over them. Also, since we already have programs that check the correctness of proofs, then the checks of the proofs can be done. So, have we done it? Have we solved the halting problem? Well, no, we already proved before that it's impossible. Thus, this program must fail or it would solve the halting problem. So let's dissect how this program fails. There are two ways in which our program would fail to correctly determine if a program halts or loops. The first way in which this program might fail is if the program loops forever and never ends. However, we know that programs must either loop or halt, so the only way for this program to never halt is if it never finds a proof of either. For some m and x, we can't find a proof of either m of x loops or m of x halts, even though one of those must be true, which means our math system would be incomplete. There's a second way in which this program might fail, which is if it returns the wrong answer. For this to happen, we find a proof that m of x halts even though it loops, or a proof that m of x loops even though it actually halts. Either way, we found a proof of a false statement, which is the definition of unsoundness. I want to reiterate that a result like this would be devastating for the math system, since unsoundness would completely delegitimize the math system, as explained in the previous video. So, because the halting problem is unsolvable, math itself must be either incomplete or unsound, which is Gödel's first incompleteness theorem. 
As an interesting side note, let's assume math is sound and re-examine the case in which our math system is incomplete. That means we have some program m and input x for which we can never prove either m of x loops or m of x halts. But what does that program actually do? It must loop. This is because if the program halted, there's definitely a proof that it does so. There will always be the brain dead proof, which follows what the program does at every step. The proof would look something like, at step 1, the program does this, at step 2, the program does that, at step 3, etc., until, on the final step, the program halts. Since the program we wrote never finds this proof, m of x cannot halt. We have an m of x that doesn't have a proof that it halts or loops, which means that it must loop, but we can never prove it. If you remember, I did pull a fast one in this video in that I subtly changed Gödel's first incompleteness theorem. Rather than prove that the math system might be inconsistent, I showed that it might be unsound. Don't worry, I'll write that wrong in the next video. And there might even be a bonus thrown in.